Hello and welcome back to the Daily Royal, a podcast covering the daily events of all the European royal families. Today we are going to be talking about all of the events from Tuesday, March 30th of 2021, and we are going to cover some additional uh, monarchies in the world that I don't talk about on this podcast. However, I'm not sure what those are yet. Um, Like, I don't know how many we're going to cover. We're going to go through the podcast, um, and then if we can go up to five, we will. My guess is we probably won't have time for all five that I had planned for today, um, because today was not busy, but busy enough that it'll probably be like 20 minutes of daily events, and then I'm trying to keep this week's episodes at like a half hour, so we may not have enough time for five Um, So I'm thinking somewhere probably like between three and five we'll go through um, on the royal families that I don't talk about. So with all of that being said, um, I am doing a car podcast tonight because work is really, really slow. I'm trying to get myself in the habit of like... (sighs) Oh, I'm not going to be real honest. I took the last two weeks kind of off of my day job. And while it's been lovely, um, that doesn't really work long term. Like people got to work. And um, even though it's slow, like I need to be in my car available to work um, and kind of get myself back into my schedule. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to record this podcast. I'm in what I thought was going to be a really quiet spot. Um, I think it might be quiet, quieting down now, but I somehow, like, the minute I parked and started getting ready to record, like, the two cars that are around me both decided to leave, and one of them was a bigger diesel engine truck, so it was really loud. Um, so obviously you didn't hear any of that because I recorded once they were gone, um, but I'm thinking we'll have some quiet now. But if you do hear some ambient sound, it is because I'm sitting in a parking lot um, in my car waiting for DoorDash to send me orders, which it will not do. So here I am. Um, So let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, We are actually starting with the Belgian royal family today. Belgium today, King Philippe actually had two different events. So I think Queen Matilda is probably, um, I think Belgium schools are on like a holiday break. So she's probably doing the whole like holiday break thing with the kids. I don't really know how many of them, three are still in, well, all of them are in Belgium, but I don't know if Elizabeth has like the same school schedule. Um, but anyway, So I don't expect to see her, and I think this was the last event that was actually scheduled um, for the Belgian royal family. That does not mean there won't be some pop-ups, but they are not a family that typically take um, Holy Week off, so I would expect that trend to continue. Um, But King Philippe, like I said, did have a couple of different events today. So first he had a, a video meeting like a video conversation it is so weird that like we're over a year in this into this pandemic and I still don't know what the like best way to talk about these things are um like it's a video conference but in a normal world would this be like an audience or a working visit like I just genuinely don't know but anyway Um, he held a video conference with the chairman of an organization, um, or, like, initiative called Get Up Wallonia, um, the Strategic Council, um, which exists basically to respond to emergencies related to the pandemic, but also, um, encourage the Wallonian people, I think that's the right 
the appropriate way to refer to them, um, to, like, be a little more prepared. I think we can all arguably say, like, none of us knew what to do in a pandemic, right? Like, none of us knew. <laughs> um, there are times when I'm still, like, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Um, I actually, like, oh, it was a couple of days ago. So, <laughs> when I was in going to get my COVID vaccine, um, I, you know, was, I was six feet away. I was not COVID. I'm not COVID positive. I know this. And neither were the people that were giving the vaccinations also know this. Um, but, like, it was still normal for me to kind of, like, make a joke. There was a line, and I was the only person in the line, so I, like, made a joke of, like, running to the front, and then I didn't stop. I was a little closer than six feet, but then the nurse was like, oh, no, you don't have to run. You're fine, like, joking back with me, um, and, like, put her arm on me, and I'm like, what are, what are we doing? Like, this is not COVID safe, and we're both, like, in vaccination situations at the moment. It was just, it was really bizarre, and, like, clearly none of us know how to live through a pandemic. Um, so this get up Bologna really encourages like preparedness, also working together, um, and getting through emergencies such as global pandemics. Um, so that was the first event. And then this is the event that I was really excited about since I saw it on Sunday. Um, King Philippe today visited the Pfizer factory is what I'm going to call it in Belgium. So this is a vaccination uh, preparation site, um, like a manufacturing site for the Pfizer vaccine in Belgium. Um, and so he was able to tour the facility and discuss Pfizer as the company, their role in providing vaccinations around the world. Um, I think part of why I was so excited about this, and I've talked about this now, um, is that I received the Pfizer vaccine. So my experience is now kind of rooted in which vaccine I received. Um, and so I will say, like, Pfizer was honestly the last one I wanted to receive. I did not want to receive a Pfizer vaccine. Um not for any particular reason. I just thought it would be more accessible to receive a Moderna and thought I would be able to, I was really hoping for a Johnson and Johnson single dose vaccine, but that's not what I got. Um, and that's okay. I'm happy to be half vaccinated. Um, and of course we'll go back for my second dose of Pfizer happily, but, um, it was just really interesting to see kind of like some behind the scenes of what, um, the vaccination preparation looks like, what kind of process it all goes through, and, um, a f like, just the whole, the whole thing. Um, it's really cool. And so, especially now that I've received the Pfizer vaccine, it makes it, like, a little cooler. Um, sorry, I just completely, like, got really quiet there. There's this child... He's not really a child. He's a teenager, but I'm near a park, but I'm not like right beside a park, but he is riding his bike like a speed devil. And he is like ramping into the parking lot that I'm in from, I think just the grass. Like, I don't think there's an uphill path right there. It's so crazy. Okay. So that's why I just got like distracted for a minute. There's a lot happening in what I thought was going to be an extremely quiet spot. Okay, so that's what was going on in Belgium. So now we are going to go ahead and move on to the UK. In the UK, in terms of public-facing events, there was really, um, there were several events, but the only person doing all of them was the Duchess of Cornwall. So she had a full day of 
different engagements. Um, I wasn't, I, I will say, like, I wasn't completely shocked. I knew if anyone was going to be working this week from the British royal family, like, in terms of visits and things like that, I knew it would be Charles or Camilla, um, just because they don't have school-aged children, um, and they're, they're not in full-blown quarantine because of their age, so I knew it was going to be them, um, but I wasn't sure if, given their, like, recent visit to Greece, I wasn't sure what that was gonna look like, um, however, like, it totally made sense. I was not surprised at all. So her first visit, she traveled to Victoria Station in London, and it looks like she used um, the underground or the tube, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's the public metro system in London, but it, they don't call it the metro, and I have been informed that I am not to call it the metro. Um, it is the underground or the tube. And so, Victoria Station is one of the, like, largest stations in London for, uh, trains. You can take larger trains, um, that are, like, go all around. You can take, uh, metros out of it. You can catch the buses, um, and then taxis and stuff sit out there like crazy, too. Um... So, she traveled using what I think is a met uh, underground, um, and then during this trip, she learned more about the Rail to Refuge program, which is an organ or which is a program to help people who are victims of domestic violence escape and seek safety. Um, so it's a partnership with the, the transit system and, um, I think it was Women's Aid was the organization, but I do want to say, um, I saw these really cool billboards the other day, um, uh, online. I don't see billboards in person. I don't live in a town that has billboards, so I don't see them in person. Um, but I saw the, I saw these online and it was about, um, making sure that we talk about domestic violence in gender neutral terms. Yes, women are predominantly the victims, but like men are also victims of domestic violence. It's not just women. Um, and that's part of this whole like women are the weaker sex narrative that we need to escape from. So that's why I use people in this sentence. Um, next, Camilla visited Campson's Pharmacy's warehouse, um, which is, Campson's is a pharmacy that I have never heard of, um, and I don't know if it's a, so, like, when I think of pharmacies, I tend to think of, like, CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aids, um, that are, like, have cosmetics, but also have medicine, and first aid needs and things like that. But I do know there are pharmacies out there that are, like, solely prescription and medication-based, so I don't know which one Campson's is, um, but Campson's is not a drugstore that I have heard of in the UK. The only one I've really heard of, though, is Boots, so I don't, I don't quite know. Um, so she was there to primarily thank the workers for their efforts during the pandemic as well as throughout the lockdown because clearly they are essential employees and pharmacies are like a place that were always open even through lockdown, um, much like grocery stores. So their work is extremely important and that's kind of one of those things, like one of the occupations that people don't think of as... Um, an essential worker or, um, like a, a helping profession, but of course it is because we need those things. So that was her second, uh, event of the day or engagement. Um, and then finally she visited Christ Church in Luz, um, 
where she met the volunteers for Fitzjohn's Food Bank, um, which has seen, this is heartbreaking, but not unexpected, um, which has seen a 15 to 25% increase in um, clients over the past year. So that's a lot. Um, and it kind of goes along with this statistic that was, that I saw last night, that was 41% of renters in the U.S. didn't pay their February rent and are now potentially facing eviction. I was one of them. Actually, I didn't pay my March rent and I just didn't even want them to file an eviction, so I left my apartment and um, moved back home. But like, I'm in that 41%, um, and it's awful. Like, not gonna lie, I'm <laughs> the pandemic sucks. So, luckily, I have family that I'm able to go home to, and it's been fine. Um, however, I'm recording a podcast in my car, so it, you know. It's, it's an adjustment all around. Um, so that is what was going on public facing at least. Now I am going to check um, the court circular. Hopefully it's up. It's only 7.20 p.m. where I'm at right now, um, which means it's past midnight, but yay, it's up. Okay. <laughs> which, because I have to account for time change and uh, England's time just changed Sunday. So... But the court circular is up for today, March 30th. Um, so at Windsor Castle, the Archbishop of, Canter of Canterbury had an audience with the Queen via telephone this afternoon. Um, apparently they talked about Easter and God and lovely things, I'm sure. Um, and then... In, at Clarence House, we have the Duchess of Cornwall's visits, and then we have at Kensington Palace, uh, the Duke of Cambridge, president of the Football Association, held a meeting via video link. Um, and then, oh, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read this and then tell you why I laughed. Um, so His Royal Highness, Joint Patron, the Royal Foundation of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, afterwards held a meeting via video link with Mr. William Gates, co-chairman and trustee of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I was so confused when I saw Mr. William Gates. It's Bill Gates. <laughs> I love the court circular and their formality. Um, so that is what was going on in the court circular. And now... See, this is why I wasn't sure how many we were going to talk about, <laughs> because I knew I was rambly today. So now we are going to move on to the Dutch royal family and talk about their events. <laughs> Netherlands today there was one event but I thought it was pretty cool um I probably won't talk about it as much because well we've already been going for 20 minutes and I'm only two royal families in very talkative today um but anyway in the Netherlands today Queen Maxima took part in a digital working visit to an organization called My Second Family which is a really cool organization that partners single refugee children, so minors who have sought refuge from conflict, droughts, um, famine, etc. in the Netherlands have been paired with families for like reaching majority, so they're kind of in foster homes, but they're in like single it's only them as the, 
I don't want to use this word, but it's the only word that I can think of as the, like, outsider of the family. Um, like, there are not other foster children or other refugee children in the home either. Um, it is just them with this family, which I think is a really cool concept. Um, but they... Maximo was able to speak with... It looked like three or four different young people um, and the families that are living with them. One thing I want to, like, I don't know how long these children have been in the Netherlands. They seem to have acclimated very well, so it could have been a longer time than I am thinking in my head, Um, but they spoke perfect Dutch. And from someone who now learning Dutch gives me almost anxiety because of how difficult it is, um, these kids spoke it very well, very fluid, very fluidly. Um, I am assuming that they have had extensive lessons and education in Dutch um, at this point, but still, I color me impressed. Um, learning Dutch gives me anxiety at this point. So that was Maxima's event. Um, it was through the Orange Foundation. Um, and last year, this is an organization that won an apple. I, this is one thing that I try to say in Dutch or like know it in Dutch, but I will say in English, but it's apples of orange. Um, which are basically, like, some of the best projects that the Orange Foundation is supporting. It's an award ceremony every year. Um, and so last year, this is an organization that won the award. So it was, the whole thing was organized with the Orange Foundation. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, I really appreciated that event. I thought it was really cool. Um, a different, a different kind of event than we've seen Maxima do over the past couple of weeks. Um, so, like... That always just is makes it a little more interesting because we haven't seen her do a lot of things outside of um, the financial world in the past couple of weeks. So this was this was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so that is what was going on in the Netherlands. Now we are going to move on to Spain. I should mention we've skipped Denmark and Norway so far um, because there's just nothing going on there. Um, Denmark's next event is scheduled for, like, April 6th. Norway's is scheduled for April 8th, I think. So, like, Easter holidays, we've talked about this all week. Um, it's just going to be a quiet week. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and move on to Spain. In Spain today, there was one event of our, what started out this morning as four scheduled events. Um, In Spain, we've had three of them. Today was supposed to be the last one for the week. However, something's going on tomorrow. If it is what I think it is, we'll talk about it a little bit more um, tomorrow because I think what's going on is like a political thing. So we'll talk about it tomorrow um, when it's time. But... So now Spain has five events. So there's still one more. Um, But this morning, this afternoon, King Felipe held an audience meeting thing with the president of Ghana. Oh my gosh, I just panicked and thought I got the country wrong. I did not. It's the president of Ghana. Um, So he is on a visit to Spain to attend the ceremony for Focus Africa 2023. So this happens. Um, We've talked about this. I will continue to every now and then give a little um, disclosure. This is pretty normal. Um, 
In fact, there was an event last week that I was shocked didn't happen um, because it's so normal for heads of state to meet visiting um, dignitaries. You know, yesterday the foreign minister of Algeria was in Spain, so he was able to meet with King Felipe, um, and then today with the president of Ghana. So it's pretty normal. Um, Last week I was really shocked. The Secretary of State for the United States was in Belgium visiting NATO, um, and he did meet with the foreign minister of Belgium, but I was thoroughly shocked he didn't have a meeting with King Philippe um, because he's like on his first tour and right now our president is clearly not traveling um, because really the only person in government who should be traveling is a foreign minister like I understand that President Biden will travel before the rest of us internationally but like right now he's not but so I was shocked that uh, King Philippe and Secretary Blinken did not have a meeting like what happened today with uh, King Felipe and the president of Ghana because it's just so normal. But in weird COVID circumstances, like it's always just a toss up of who's going to actually be able to meet. I think if Tony Blinken visited Spain, he probably would have met with the king because Spain is pretending, likes to pretend a lot that the pandemic is just over or it has never happened, um, especially in the community of Madrid. Um, But anyway, so that is what today was. I was looking to see if there was a lunch or anything announced in the readout and there wasn't. So I don't think there was anything else um, in relation to this event just the meeting between the two heads of state um, and the representatives on either side. There were like two people from each side who were also present. So that was King Felipe's day today. Um, Somehow still there's something on the schedule for tomorrow. Um, I was really hoping that they would have like a day, a couple days of time off because... Spain is pretending the pandemic isn't happening, which means that King Felipe and Queen Letizia are working a lot. Um, So, but that's okay. So anyway, um, we are now going to go ahead and move on to the Swedish royal family. There was one event in Sweden today, and there's really not a lot to say about it, but I decided because this was going to be the end of the episode, we would just talk about it and go into the outro. So, today, Crown Princess Victoria took part in a digital conversation with the Stockholm Resilience Center, which was really all focused on sustainability and um, the... UN Sustainable Development Goals, as well as um, just general Swedish sustainability goals. Um, When I saw Resilience Center, that is not what went through my brain whatsoever. Um, So I don't know if maybe the Google Translate was off on that or something, but anyway. Um, So that's what was going on in Sweden. Not a whole lot, but They have one more event scheduled for the week, and then they have, like, two weeks off. So, y'all, it's going to be a quiet couple weeks, I think. I don't know. We'll see. It's been louder than I expected this week. Like, there's been a lot more happening this week, especially today, than I expected. Um, And that could happen tomorrow, too. After tomorrow, like I said, I really don't expect us to have a episode on Friday covering Thursday events uh, because I just don't expect there to be any. So we'll see what that ha- what that brings. Um, we are not going to talk about any monarchies today that aren't featured um, because I ran out of time. I talked a lot. Um, I just talked a lot. Sometimes that happens. So that's it for today. Um, I'll have photos of events and videos possibly linked on thedailyroyal.com, the Daily Royal on Instagram, 
Um, like and review this podcast wherever you are listening. Oh, I want to say one more thing. Oh, no. Uh, tomorrow starts the first day of a new pre-recorded introduction to this podcast um, because I think that will help some of my dog's anxiety, although a lot of it has already been helped. Um, I think that will help a good bit because she always gets really anxious when I start recording the intro. So this was the last time you'll hear an intro that wasn't pre-recorded um, and is just part of the episode. So that will be in tomorrow's episode. That's like the April goal, um, the change for April, I should say. So I will talk to you all tomorrow on April 1st. Have a great last day of March, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.